Hello, welcome back again. Uh, today, I will take a few minutes to introduce to you three of my favorite books on neoliberal globalization. Now, those of you who are familiar with my work probably already know that uh, part of my subspecialization in post-colonial studies is the study of neoliberal globalization, especially its impact on the post-colonial cultures and responses to it from the post-colonial uh, cultures in terms of their politics and their literature. I do have a longer article which includes five books on my website and I will post a link to that. So please feel free to read it. And uh, that would give you two additional books that I like. Now, these books are not necessarily the major books on globalization or by the major theorists. These are just the books that I have read, taught, and found extremely useful for my own work. So the first one on my list is uh, Zygmunt Bauman's Globalization. Uh, it's a real slim volume. And I have a, a, a standalone uh, lecture on it as well, which I will post a link to. This is by far one of the most philosophical books that I've read on globalization. And it's a slim book, but it packs a lot of information. Overall, uh, you'll enjoy reading it. Uh, the main theme in the book is the question of mobility, right? and uh, escape or movement away from the very givens of life. And what he argues in the book is that within the neoliberal model of globalization, a global elite is created. And that elite is primarily defined by the ease of movement, how quickly, how easily can they move from one part of the world to the other. And they sort of share a common elite culture. And that within that given culture or economy that is created because of globalization, uh, a strange divide occurs. And that is that the merits and the values of the elite culture can be shared across the nations by the global elite. But the consequences of globalization are usually left to the locals, to the local governments or people who cannot move. So for example, if a company comes in and pollutes your environment, the global policies are such that they can pick up and leave at any time and then leave the local population or the local governments to deal with the environmental damage or whatever they must have done. And towards the end of the book, he also talks about the emergence of this uh, new system of policing and incarceration. And that is happening because most nation states can no longer offer any kind of welfare or upward mobility to their citizens. So they increasingly become security states. And by becoming security states, they can legitimize themselves. So these are some of the themes in the book. It's a deeply philosophical book and I highly recommend it. If you want to read a critique of neoliberalism that is philosophically informed, but also realize, uh, relies on a thorough understanding of the global economy, Zygmunt Bauman will be the person to read. The second one, John Rapley, uh, he often is not necessarily quoted in the globalization studies. I had come across his book while reading for my comprehensive exams, and I liked it for quite a few reasons. First of all, I liked it because within the book, he first discusses what an economic regime is, right? How is it constituted? And in order to define that, he goes to Gramsci, right? And then discusses the concept of an elite regime. And then how does a regime rationalize itself, justify itself to the people through the consent of the people? And then what happens in different economic struggles or cycles is that there comes a moment when a regime's self-presentation collapses and it must renegotiate a new uh, contract with the people. 
And that's where he sets his sights by suggesting that neoliberalism has reached a stage where that misrecognition is no longer possible, that people can now see through the facade and see that so much of his of what is being done is probably not in their interest. And then he also traces quite clearly the ramifications of that and rise of fundamentalisms all across the world. And now one could say the rise of different kind of populist regimes in United States, in Europe, in India, elsewhere, Pakistan, all are connected to neoliberalism. So if you want to understand economically and socially how neoliberalism structures its regimes of power and then what it unleashes in terms of popular responses and and because of the failure of the state the rise of popular responses now rapley also discusses in his book that there are usually two regimes associated with a productive process one is the accumulative regime and the other is the distributive regime. And his argument is that for neoliberalism, for neoliberal globalization, the accumulative regime is great. If you have money, chances are, you know, if you're not stupid, you will make more money. But it's the distributive function of the state, distribution of wealth and resources that is constantly failing and hence it is causing social and political turmoil and problems. So. For all these reasons, uh, this is really a good book to read, especially if you want to trace the impact of neoliberalism on the rise of fundamentalisms, on the rise of fundamentalist movements, chauvinistic movements, nationalistic movements. I have used it quite successfully uh, in at least two of my books, so I highly recommend it. And the third on my list today is, of course, Joseph Stiglitz, Globalization and Its Discontents. It also has now been published in a revised uh, volume. Stiglitz is a Nobel laureate in economics and was also an executive of the World Bank. And this particular book is interesting because it's mostly based in his own experience, but it gives you a lot of empirical evidence. And it also highlights the imperial nature of IMF relationships with the rest of the world, especially with the developing world and what kind of problems it could cause. There's a wonderful example, a sad example, which he gives where uh, Ethiopia, one of the poorest countries in the world, uh, had decided to offer its airline as a collateral and raise money privately to pay off their IMF debt and financially, according to World Bank, according to Stiglitz's view, that made perfect sense that you take another loan at a low interest rate and pay off your high interest loan and that IMF absolutely refused to accept that. And the reason what he gives and what we all ought to understand is because at a certain stage, IMF's interest is no longer your economic stability. If it is, it's because IMF is trying to ensure that its shareholders, the nations that have lent you the money, gain the maximum profit out of the loan. And the maximum profit out of the loan comes if you continue servicing the debt, if you continue restructuring your economy to meet the requirements of your creditors. So at a certain stage then, all the restructuring does is it's not necessarily for the good of the people it's there to stabilize your debt so that those who have lent you money through imf can reap the maximum benefits so if you want to study and learn the globalization from within from someone who is a nobel laureate in economics and who has worked for these institutions, especially the World Bank. If you want to read a book that gives you the insider's view with empirical evidence, but also with, eye, with an eye towards how to make this thing work for most of the people of the planet and not just the you know, uh, North Atlantic region, this is a really good book to read. So overall, 
these are three books that I have read that I have used in my scholarly work and I've also taught. The three cover neoliberal globalization from different angles. And I think if you read them, you know, in concert, uh, you will get to understand how globalization works, how neoliberalism works, what does it cause in the world, how to make it better, all by comparing these three books. Now, as I said, I have a longer blog entry on five books, and these three are included in that on my website, and I would encourage you to go and read it. I will also post the links to these books in the description so that if you feel like purchasing them, you just need to click on the link. These are some of my thoughts on these three really interesting books on globalization. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to post them in the comment section. And if you like what I uh, share with you through these videos, please do subscribe to the channel. And for right now, that is all I have, and I will see you next time.